Hey guys, welcome back to Bioinformatics slash Computational Biology uh, with Python. In this class, or in this lecture, um, we're going to do something different. So we're actually going to um, create a GitHub account. So some of you may be familiar with GitHub, some of you may not be. Um, GitHub, let's see, what's the best way to, uh, analogy to make? Uh, GitHub is kind of a source um, for all of your code for uh, when you're working on a project. Um, we haven't really used anything. Okay, so let's do um, I'm going to pull one up real quick. So just about every package um, that you work with has a GitHub page, right? So this is one um, that I've recently used. It's called Pathfind R, and I'm actually going to, at the time of this video, it hasn't been in R package for my R class yet, but I'm going to add these videos because I really like this package. Anyways, um, so if we click on, so I just typed in Pathfinder, um, Pathfinder R, Pathfinder, GitHub. And um, what this is, is this is kind of like a, um, it's a few different things. So it's kind of your public repository for your code. Um, it is also, it can be this readme is essentially like documentation for your code or an explanation of what your code does. So this is uh, kind of, okay, how do you use Pathfinder? So it says how to install it, um, how to perform enrichment analysis with it, some of the example graphs, um, all these beautiful graphs uh, that they even allow you to click on, um, that will become bigger. Um, let's get out of that. <laughs> um, so it's kind of the dictionary for your uh, encyclopedia for your package. Um, it also, as you can see here, um, I've actually used this. So um, this gentleman, um, E. Gulgin. <laughs> I'm not quite sure his name, unfortunately. Um, he created this video, and as you can see, it's kind of like it has the documentation of everything that this package does, which is kind of cool. Um, but it was actually, you know, all packages have issues, all code has issues, and um, I had reported an issue to him. Um, closed. Let's see if I'm on here. Here we go, Dr. Josh Vandenberg. Um, and he responded really quick, which was awesome. He like fixed his code um, with an error that I found. Um, anyway, so yeah, and, and as you're coding, as you can see, there's also, um, we've actually downloaded using this before. Um, and uh, so like when we download from uh, Software Carpentry and stuff, that's from their GitHub page. Um, what else can I tell you? Fork it, so you usually can fork other people's code. That means you can make a copy of their code. Um, you can cite the repository. It's just kind of a place, it's kind of like a Wikipedia for coders in that this is where everything about the package or the code that you write is put. Um, it also acts as a, for those of you that took my R class, um, when we did our um, our pubs for our documentation or like our kind of our uh, portfolio that's the word I was looking for um, this kind of acts like a portfolio as well um, so you could make this you know just have your code if it's your your library anyway so a whole bunch of different uses for it and if you become a um, if you, become, if you work on a project with somebody um, that's really heavy in coding, um, having access or knowing how to use GitHub is, is very important. Okay, um, so with that being said, um, let's sign up for an account. 
Uh, so first thing I'm going to do, uh, sign up for a GitHub account. So I just went to github.com. Um, do I have an account already? I hope I don't. All right. So I'm just going to use my email address uh, from tech. Already taken. Son of a... Um, well, let's see. Uh, Dr. Let's do one of my other... Let's begin the adventure. That one's already taken too? Uh, let's try. Okay, this one's not taken. Uh, okay, <laughs> that's another email. Uh, so create a password. Um, beautiful, your username. Oh. Um, I think you can't have spaces. May only contain alpha male characters or single hyphens. You can't begin or end with a hyphen. All right, Josh Vanderbilt. Um, project email updates. Why not in this email account? Just it's kind of just my spam. <laughs> just gets tons of spam crap. Uh, verify your account. Um, make sure that we're human. Two dimensional odd. Uh, wait, pick one square that shows two oh, identical objects. That's a two dimensional. All right. Oh my gosh, really putting me through the test here. Uh huh. Oh, I thought I had to do three. Okay. Uh oh, okay. Uh let's get the email. It's coming up here. Things open. Uh, 9883902 uh, how many team members? So depending on uh, <laughs> I'm a teacher, so I'll put that. Um, for this account I'm just gonna say two to five. Since this is I'm not gonna be using this for the class uh, besides this video. Um, you can, it looks like down here you can also skip the personalization if you want. Um, ooh. Um, collaborative coding is likely what you're going to be using this for. So continue. Um, yada, yada, yada. Oh, we don't. Ooh, I have a teacher button. Okay, I'm gonna continue for free, <laughs> but my other account might do some teacher benefits here. Um, okay, um, I'm gonna create a repository first things first at the top left here. I'm going to call this repository Hello World. Um, Oh, wait, no, sorry. It's gonna be, hello, world. I'm gonna say this is my first repository for Git. Um, um, yeah. Okay, oh, the readme file. Um, so if we look at this, uh, learn more about readmes. Um, so that was when I showed you this um, PathVR GitHub. What? PathVR description. Uh, interesting. No, I want. Why is it? Uh, oh, Pathfinder, right? Um, so this readme file, if I click on readme, 
right here, readme.md, uh, that's this whole introduction file, right? So um, if you want to include it, um, you can. Um, so this is often the first item a visitor will see when visiting your repository. Readme files typically include information on what the project does, why the project is useful, how you just can get started with the project. Um, so it's kind of a, like I said, it's kind of like the directions um, for your uh, app or, or code. Um, so we're gonna create a repository. Um, here's the readme. <laughs> so this is my first repository for GitHub, hello world. So you can edit this, uh, you know, and add to it. Um, if I had some direct, or some code for an app, I could add it here for users to Commit changes, so commit changes kind of like save. So as you can see now, it says what I just put there. Um, so what else can we do? Um, so we can create a branch. So branching lets you have different versions of a repository at one time. Um, so by default, your repository is one branch named main. That's, as you can see, is what we have right here. Um, and this is considered to be the definitive branch. Um, you create additional branches off of main in your repository. Uh, and you can use branches to have different versions of a project at one time. Um, so it's helpful when you want to add a new feature to your project without changing the main source code. So like, say I'm like, okay, mm, I want to, this is my app, very basic app, and say like, oh, I'm thinking about, you know, adding a graph. So I could create a branch and that would allow me to play with it without interrupting my main one or without, writing over this, right? Um, so uh, the work done on the different branches will not show up under your main branch, so that's this main one here, uh, until you merge it, um, which we'll cover later. Um, you can use branches to experiment and make edits before committing them to main. Um, so when you create a branch off main branch, you will make a copy or a snapshot of main at the point in time that you make the branch. Uh, someone else may change this to the main branch while you're working on your branch. So if you have teammates uh, or coders or collaborators working on it with you, um, you could pull in those updates to your branch if you want as well. Um, so it's kind of like this. Um, so this is our main branch right here. Um, and so if we wanted to make a Zoom in on this. It's so tiny. Uh, let's try. There we go. Uh, so say so we make a branch, right? So this is our main. Nothing changes here. We make a branch or a copy, and then we can do things to it. Um, we can discuss the changes on this branch with our teammates. We can add a feature or whatever, and then if we want, we can merge it back uh, over our main branch. Or to our main branch. Um, okay, so let's see. Um, all right, so now let's create a branch. So we go up here. Um, let's do, we're going to create a branch and we're going to call it. So read me edits here, um, and then I click on this right here that says create branch read me edits from main. And now we have two branches, main or 
read me edits. So I click on main, it takes me back to the main. Or I can click on read me edits, which is just the exact same thing right now. Um, okay, so now let's make changes. So when you create a new branch in the previous step, GitHub, Git, GitHub, GitHub, um, brought you the code page for you to, uh, for your new readme edges branch, which is a copy of main. Um, so you can make and save changes to a file in your repository. So on GitHub, save changes are called commits. So you commit it to, you commit to changing, I guess the best way to think about it. Um, each commit has an associated commit message. Um, which is a description why a particular change was made. So it's kind of like version control, right? Um, so every time you save it, so it's kind of cool. It's like, say you were working on your thesis, so you're working on some paper. Um, every time you save it, when you hit save, you also have to have a description of why or what you changed. And this is awesome when you work with teams, so you're not all changing stuff and you're not like, why the heck does that change? Why does that change? Um, so, it's wonderful um, in, in that regard. Um, so this commit message captures the history of your changes so that other contributors can understand what you've done and why you've done it. Um, so under this readme edits branch, um, click the R, uh, RMD file. That's where we are right now. Um, or sorry, the, the readme.md file. Click on the edit, which we've already done once. Um, um, we're going to create a section we're going to call about the authors. Uh, Dr. Vandenbrink is a tenure track, I'm just BSing here, um, professor in bioinformatics. Um, his passion is for educating the youth in computational biology languages. He also spends way too much time on YouTube and editing his videos for his own personal Good. <laughs> okay. Uh, I wonder if there's uh, when I write some of these. Sometimes I realize that like I'm a dad and I do a bunch of dad jokes, and then I wonder when I write these things, I'm like, is there a time that not only have I laughed because I make myself laugh all the time, but like, do I ever make you guys laugh? Probably not. Maybe like a sensible chuckle, but not real laughs. But I make myself laugh, and that's all that matters. Right? All right. Um, okay. What's it doing? Commit changes. Um, an actual extended description. Try to make my students laugh with a terrible dad joke that wasn't funny. Uh, and I'm gonna commit. Wait. Commit directly to. Yep. To this branch. Perfect. Um, or if you've like forgot to change to like your uh, edits one, you can be like, oh crap, I want to keep these changes, but I need it to be in a different branch. Um, then you can say create a new branch. Um, but we're already in the one that we want. Commit changes. All right. So now, um, let's look at main. Okay, here's our main one. Nothing's changed. Read me edits. Boom. Bad jokes included. <laughs> and so, okay. Uh, let's stop here. 20 minutes. Okay. Time flies. I get up. Just, you're gonna be spending all the time making a GitHub page. As much time as you're on Instagram, you're gonna be on GitHub in the future. I can feel it. Um, so that's generally GitHub. Uh, we're gonna do a lot more. Um, so don't get it twisted that way. We're not done by any means. But we're done with this video because my 20 minute limit time it timer limit timer 
is just about up. Um, so that's a brief intro. Next video, we'll get a little bit more into like merging commits and things like that. Um, so thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're watching on YouTube, hit like, hit subscribe. Shout out. So I was advising um, students today and one of my students was asking about the YouTube videos and I had to confess how much time I spent on them uh, and all this stuff. He asked me, funny enough, uh, I really like this, this student I wanted uh, out of my name, but he was like, oh, are you thinking about going full time on YouTube? And I was like, if you could see how little money <laughs> I've made with YouTube videos on uh, people outside of the class, like from these ads, uh, you would know that it's quite comical to think that I could go full time. Uh, I, we tallied it up together. And I was like, okay, if you count how much I spend on money on editing and music licenses and all this stuff for my videos compared to how much I've made lifetime, I make about negative $100 a month. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, I don't think I'm going full time anytime soon. But long story short, we were looking at uh, showing them some of the cool stuff about my passion for doing this and why. And for some reason, Zimbabwe. Um, there's a ton of views from Zimbabwe this month. So if you're watching in Zimbabwe, I see you shout out. That's kind of cool that uh, the, the, they represented the number two country behind the United States in views on my YouTube page. So um, so I'm getting out there and, and educating people around the world, which is pretty cool. So uh, shout out Zimbabwe. If you're watching on YouTube, hit like, hit subscribe. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.